I'm going to take a second to talk about gatekeeping in, um, in our communities, gatekeeping in the industry, um, and just my, my experience with gatekeeping. Okay, give me one second. I had a magnet in my hand and I don't know where I put it. I just want to make sure I don't put it close to an electronic and damage anything. Okay, I found. I'm playing with these two two magnets for like no reason and I don't want to I don't want it to touch my laptop or anything, damage any components. So whenever I put these down and I can't find them, I have to take a moment to, to find them. Uh, so anyway, I want to talk about gatekeeping. So gatekeeping is <laughs> when people just, I guess withhold information that you know they don't necessarily need to withhold it doesn't make sense to withhold uh, when they don't want to share information strategies opportunities feedback anything like that um, you know gatekeeping can be if someone doesn't even you know they don't they don't even want to tell you where they work or they don't want to tell you you know about uh, or they tell you you know you might know of an opportunity at their company and they'll tell you oh you shouldn't apply you don't need to apply it's not necessary and you know essentially they're just they're just being gatekeepers and getting getting in your way needlessly so I'll give a, you know I'll give an exact example right here I have my phone in front of me so I was I have a lot of startup experience I've worked for a few startups and I was looking to get into startups not as a consultant but as an embedded employee so I've worked for startups that were in the gaming space. I've worked for startups in the social media space. i worked for startups that were trying to develop softwares for higher education, softwares for clothing companies like, I don't know, Lord & Taylor or something like that. Um, you know, asset management type softwares for warehouses. A lot of, just a lot of diverse experience. I have some health tech experience, but um, most of my experience would be, you know, in the hospital space, um, the governmental space, uh, not a lot with like medical devices. For example, I don't have a lot of experience with, with medical devices, so I was looking to get into that, that health tech scene. Um, so I knew of a resource, I knew of someone who works in the scene. He, he's a physician, he went to a Caribbean medical school and he did not gain resident. He he gained a preliminary residency here, which means that he did one year of training. Um, after which, you know, after your first year, you then have to apply for a specialty like neurology or anesthesiology. You know, what some of these programs do is they require you to do one year uh, intern year somewhere, and then you spend that year applying to other places to finish. You know, the other three plus years of your residency, so you can become a physician. So he went to you know Caribbean Medical School. He came here. He did do a preliminary year, but unfortunately, he didn't match anywhere else. And now he's been working in, you know, in med tech, health tech, you know, companies. Uh, med tech meaning, you know, medical device companies, and then health tech, yeah, companies that are making softwares that clinicians are using. Um, for example, telehealth applications. He's he's worked with a few startups in that area. So I knew of this resource, and uh, I reached out to him to talk about an opportunity with the, uh, you know, with some of the companies that he was involved in. He's involved with a lot of companies. Um, so I sent him my CV to socialize and just see if there's, and this is recently, so the CV I sent him is probably the one you'll, you'll see my LinkedIn. So I sent him my CV to socialize and he, rather than socialize, what he did was he, um, he gave me some sort of follow-up and I'm going to read the follow-up because this, this is a good example of gatekeeping. So he said, quick CV follow-up. Uh, then he has some bullet points. He said, experience, what is your core competency? Uh, where does it fit into product or engineering slash growth slash business slash operations slash customer experience question mark so he was like base he was like what do you do um, which I was like I think my CV kind of follows my value and my LinkedIn is pretty polished not to mention we've had co intelligent conversations where I've conveyed you know what I can help execute and deliver on he said, for example, if you're an engineer, you can code. If you're a designer, you can design. If you're a marketer, you can run social media. If you're a clinician, you can provide care or offer strategy. I don't see your value, at least in you know the health tech space, which is where I work, which is my niche. He said, early stage startups are flat. I know this. I work with startups heavily. I have more experience than him actually. Um, they're flat, not you know, uh, non hierarchical. I are cool. I don't know how to say that word. Um, collaborative, which is a strange word to include because 
I, I, uh, most companies are meant to be collaborative and very different from your work experiences. I don't know what to say to that because I've done consulting for a long time and I have several startups under my belt. How do you tell the story of the transition? Why health tech? You don't need to tell a story of a transition. You just need to explain your value. If you can explain your value intelligently to a company, industries are agnostic, you know, markets are agnostic. No one needs to explain why they're going from New York to the Bay Area. No one needs to explain why they're going from entertainment into pharma. No one needs to explain why they're going from a project management into, I don't know, a product management or becoming an agile coach or something of that nature. People can change fields, markets, or industries. At the end of the day, all you need to show is that you're committed, you have a value, you're a serious candidate, and that you can execute. You can do the job and uh, hit the ground running. You understand, you have some topical knowledge of the company and its initiatives, its purpose, its product, its business lines, and that contextual information combined with some knowledge transfers will help you be an asset from day one. So when he says, Early stage startups, again, I, I have startups from when he was in school, before he was in school even. So I know, you know, not to sound egotistical, I know more about startups and it's just sharing that to be factual. Um, I know that they're flat, I know they're collaborative, but they're, I don't know what he means by different from your work experiences because while I've worked for governmental agencies, Fortune 500 companies, um, established enterprises. I've also done a lot of work in the startup space, and that is something that I disclose and I, I share and speak openly about. Um, when I, whenever I speak at any you know engagement or or discussion presentation, I actually mention a lot of my startup experiences. I'm involved in startups now. Uh, I don't see C level or VP from your CV. I don't know what that what to do with that. Head of product for an early seed for early stage company is possible if they took a huge bet on you. But if I'm being if I'm being a hundred with you, you would be better in an entry level role. So I'm looking at this right now. When we had our conversations, we left with the understanding that a lot of the initiatives he's involved in actually did not have a CIO. They did not have informatic. A lot of the healthcare companies he was involved in had clinicians. They had providers. They had business and salespeople. But when I pushed him for actual information on the IT posture and, and what does that leadership look like, he was very brutal with me where he said, we really don't, that's not really a focus. And I said, that doesn't make sense. If you have, for example, you have a telehealth application that you're trying to, uh, you know, trying to make a compliance, you're trying to get the approvals, you're trying to get it rolled out and, and adopted. Um, it doesn't make sense that you're telling me you don't have a CIO, you don't even have you know, you have people building it, but I said, where, where is the person who's basically going to own and drive it? So we talked about, you know, what my value would be. So that's why when I get this email, I'm like, he just seems confused as though we've never spoken. When he says, what is your, you know, when he says, what are your qualifications? My thought is, I've not only sent this person my CV, we've spoken, right? I made sure that when he left our conversation, he knew everything he needed to know because that's a key skill when it comes to communication is that it's not about what you know in here you want to be able to articulate and communicate things so that the other party can internalize it they should leave knowing what you wanted them to know so that's something i consider myself fairly fairly uh, uh good at is that i i'm very fluent with communication so when he sent me this email i was a little bit confused because i said He's speaking to me as though we've never spoken or he has no idea what uh, what my interest is or and also where my value lies. Uh, and when he was talking about startups and how they're you know how they're structured, I said this comes off a little condescending because I was working in the industry before you. I have many, many years of experience ahead of you. And that's not to say you don't have a value to me. I mean I am looking to leverage you as a resource. But I think when people work in the startup space, they, they think it's its own world, and it is its own world. I'll, I'll be frank. I've never worked in, in startups you know, full, full time. Anytime I've been involved with a startup, I've always had some full time job. I'm working with startups on the side, or it's been a short term, you know, full time engagement, but it might be short term, like temporary CTO, something like that. Uh, and not all my startups are even 
you know, they're not all on my LinkedIn. I think I only have like one or two, maybe, maybe three. Uh, but when he was telling me about the startup space, I was just like, you've been working in the startup space for about three, about three years, right? Three, three years. I think he finished med school in 2018, something like that. Um, and then you know, he did his prelim year, like 20, 2019 or 2020, something like that. So I said, you know, you've only been working for about three, maybe four years. I've been in the startup scene for, since, frankly, before you even started college. Even. So when I was reading this email, I said, he's acting like, he's acting like getting into the startup world is something that's extremely difficult. It's not. I've been, I have startup experience. He then acts like getting any sort of management level role uh, would be impossible. When he said entry level role would probably be, um, would probably be where I'm best fit or most qualified. I said, look, I, I didn't respond to him by the way. When I saw this, I said, there's really nothing of value here. I can't. I can tell that this person just isn't interested in having intelligent conversations, and they, I think, just don't want me in their space. And I'll follow up on why. Uh, but when I saw this email, there were just a lot of red flags. Um, the way he was speaking, the the points he was making, which are nonsensical. I said, okay, this is just someone who's gatekeeping. And it happens. You'll run into people time to time who, some of them will say, yes, I would love to work with you. Some of them will, you know, they'll say something to your face. And then later on, you'll kind of get different energy or readings from them, particularly in person. I find that people in person are very, it's not just about being civil. Uh, some people to your face will say, oh, like, give me your business card. Let me take down your information. They'll ask insightful questions and you think it's going to generate business. And then later on, they go like, oh, no, um, you know, the, there's just nothing in the cards for us right now. And it's like, OK, so you were just kind of, you know, blowing smoke, I guess. So I, I went through this and I said, this is just someone who doesn't know me, my qualifications, and they don't really know what they're doing. Um, and I found it very odd, though. I, I said, I find it very odd that out of the many companies he's affiliated with, why is he not, you know, why? You know, I get curious. I get curious when, not that anyone owes me any opportunity. Um, I'm always happy to leverage people in my network if it makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, then I don't want to force anything. But I did look into his history. I said, you know, it's very interesting that he's had this career progression in the last few years because he's head of medical over here or director of this over there and i said that's that's interesting because an md is an md right foreign if, whether it's a domestic school or international school there is work put into the school and ross university has a decent education that those people know what they're doing so you know whether or not you get a residency whether or not you're a licensed physician i will still say a doctorate is a doctorate right you you put in the work i will show you that respect um but at the same time i said a lot of these companies are putting him in charge i said that kind of doesn't make sense to me so I reached out to a few companies just to kind of, just to kind of verify if he worked there because, and there's more to the email, but I, you know, don't want to, to go too, too long because these were really, all the red flags were just in the section I shared. So he was trying very hard to really keep me away from all the companies he's involved in. So I, I reached out to a few of the companies and I looked at their websites. And when I looked at the websites, I was surprised that, you know, he'll put that he's head of like, virtual care or head of wellness or head of, you know, patient experience. Well, a lot of these websites had him down as like an intern or a volunteer or a customer support, customer success, like, you know, specialist. And I thought that was interesting. So, yeah, I didn't, I didn't actually reach out to the companies, but all I did was, uh, I looked for their websites. Um, and if I did reach out to them, I, I, I did reach out to them, but not in the sense of asking them, oh, hey, does he work with you or is this his job? I was just like, hey, I just want to see if your website is up to date. I just, you know, trying to get a good idea on your team and your current organizational, uh, you know, chart. Uh, and some of them responded, yes. Some of them just don't answer. No, no startup wants to be like, yes, our website's up to date. Like it's, it, it's a given. Nothing's really neglected at that stage. Everyone's on top of everything. So... Uh, I wasn't sure what to make of that, that I'm, you know, I reached out to this resource. He has a LinkedIn that says one thing and he presents himself very well. He has a you know, medical degree. He has an education. Um, he's gone to an Ivy League for, for his undergrad. So it's, you know, he's a smart cookie. He's a go-getter. Um, but I, the way he came across in his email and then also later on in real life, I said, he's very, 
aggressive in the way he tries to uh, paint himself as superior and paint his initiatives at things that no one can, no one else can get involved in. Wherever he's involved, no one else can get involved. That's that's the vibe, the energy he puts out. And the way he responded to me was basically just kind of like, stay out of my lane, stay out of you know. He didn't say those words necessarily, but he was just so strong with his rejection. I said, this doesn't make any sense because I know I have a diverse experience. I've worked in different markets in different industries and I've held different roles. So there are very few entities in this country, in this world that I've spoken to that don't see the value in that. Not to say that everyone rolls out the red carpet, but there's always a conversation to be had to see if there's some synergy. So when I'm speaking with someone to kind of make some of those introductions for me and circulate my resume in a way where maybe I can't, you know, I don't have access, and they come across very strongly like, no, I won't for all of these reasons. I'm like, that is very odd. Uh, and when I did, you know, when I did some of this background check, I felt bad. I felt bad because I said, this explains his reaction. This is, you know, gatekeeping itself in general is, is a problem in our communities. Uh, people don't always, and it's, it can be a cultural thing. People don't always want to help each other out. They, they sometimes think that like, your gain will be my loss, right? It's a zero sum game. Uh, they think that we're all in competition here rather than helping each other up we have to pull each other down and that's unfortunate uh, but it's even worse when I find out the reason is not that he's insecure he thinks I'll get in his way or I'll displace him or anything like that but rather uh, you know to find out that he's kind of a fraud right um, now mind you some of the opportunities he mentioned the more recent one for example he actually is like you know head of product or head of this but more opportunities were exaggerated, falsified. Um, I mean, I felt sad when I saw one company had him down as a volunteer on their website because I think he was like one of two volunteers and everyone everyone else on the website was an employee. I'm just like, you are in the minority. That that stinks. That, that's gotta, that's, that hurts. That hurts. Uh, so that's just a little story on, on a uh, instance of gatekeeping I dealt with and it's just... It's very sad when I found out what happened, and I never, I never confronted him about this. This is actually a year-old story. This happened last spring. I never confronted him. I never actually let me, let me pull it up. Yeah, actually, last year, March fourth, that's when this happened. I never confronted him. Never said anything about it. I sometimes see him on uh, social media, or we have, we have certain orbits where he and I know people who know each other, or we have some mutuals. Um, but it is sad when people people get in the way needlessly of you trying to you know explore some new opportunities, have some conversations, uh, and then you find out the rationale is, if anything, I would actually prefer he be insecure. I would prefer that he have maybe a personal issue with me. I would prefer that he think I'm not good enough. Genuinely, gen I wish he would genuinely have a reason that for for me not being competent, uh, rather than me finding out myself that he's not the one who's competent. He's not the one who's credentialed. And I think my presence would probably throw things off for him because I, not to say I would expose him, I probably would actually. If I, if I was hired at these companies, I, I'm not saying it's my business, but I don't know if I could feel confident um, withholding this sort of material information, uh, especially when we're working in, in, in healthcare. I mean, these people are putting a lot of trust in our, and, and, and these services and to have someone there who's exaggerated the credentials and experience, you know, exaggerated the reach that they have, the impact that they have, the ownership they're taking in other enterprises, um, you know, that, that's problematic. Not that I'll act on this now. I mean, I'm just an outsider. Uh, if I join these companies, I probably would say something. But, um, yeah, I think that's just an unfortunate instance of gatekeeping because there was no big blowout or resolution or anything like this. It's just sort of this quiet conflict that has kind of, I guess festered or just continued a little bit like a cold war. Um, now that I know that he's kind of full of fluff, I have never really considered him a resource. I don't send people to him for any sort of advice because uh, once I saw his credentials were fake, I was like, I don't, I don't want to engage with him myself first of all because he's already shown what he thinks of me, um, and I also want to don't want. I, I and I did do that in the past. I would send people to him for advice, but once I saw, once I saw that things on LinkedIn and then on these companies were not lining up. I was like, this uh, this is unfortunate. I'm going to keep my distance and hopefully things work out for him and he reaches a point where he actually 
has the qualifications that he says he has and gains the qualifications that he says I need to have as well in order to enter the, uh, the help tech space. And that's that.